minute reveal of the console handheld Nintendo Switch has resulted in a renewed worldwide interest for Nintendo as a hardware manufacturer and their IPs. But is this enough to say that it will become a global success after its launch in both the short and long terms? To answer this, we will take a closer look at why the Switch will succeed or fail based on a few specific criteria. Today, we will go deeper into why the system is likely to succeed both from a financial and quality standpoint. The concept of the Nintendo Switch is both innovative and at the same time simplistic. Unlike the Wii U where all attention was put on an expensive controller and a second screen experience that failed miserably to deliver on its promise, Nintendo has this time decided to go for a single screen experience, which is equally enjoyable at home as on the go. This idea is brilliant, for many different reasons we'll get back into throughout the video, but the primary visible aspect in the trailer is the integration of a system that can be switched from being a docked console to the most powerful handheld on the market in mere seconds. The transition from TV to the tablet screen is nearly instantaneous and as close to seamless as you can get, and thanks to the brilliance of using a game card instead of a network based cloud system, there is no need for any wireless connections to play the games. There is no doubt. This system works just as well as being a handheld as it does at being a console. Seeing that there has always been a greater demand for Nintendo's handheld systems compared to consoles, fusing the two into one seems to be a smart and unconventional move. Though this also depends on how long the battery life is for the system, but that is the subject for another video. With the concept in place, and the system already taking YouTube and Twitter by storm, it is highly likely that the system is already selling. After years of stubbornness, Nintendo finally decided to contract NVIDIA to develop a custom, scalable Tegra processor for the system. The result is a handheld portion that alone seems to be significantly more powerful than the Wii U, and with game cards, they have a couple more aces in their sleeve, namely shorter loading times, better performance, no game installs, and greater storage. We would also assume that this system similarly to the 3DS might run SD cards for increased system storage, thus eliminating the need for a 500GB or 1TB hard drive. Take that Sony and Microsoft. The question remains about the power of the system when docked. If it outputs 1080p or greater, then this will be a good selling point since the transition to 4K has been slugging. And even if 4K would become the standard by 2018, if the dock contains its own processing power, then perhaps this one can be replaced with a version outputting 4K resolutions if desired, just in accordance to what a patent suggested a year back. And even then, it will be the beefiest handheld ever. Seriously, Nintendo cannot fail with this thing. Or could they? The Switch continues the Wii U's versatile approach to controller options. Nevertheless, unlike the dying system, these are not only optional to a limited number of titles. And of course, you really couldn't bring the Wii U gamepad outside of your home. The main controller, which might have analog triggers and a share button, has three or actually four different controller combinations if you include multiplayer. One controller when you play on the joypad grip, one controller when you play on the handheld screen slash console, one controller when you play with one joypad in each of your hands, and two controllers when playing multiplayer. Though this last one looks a little bit too tiny and uncomfortable to play with. The size of the handheld portion is also crafted with thought. Here are a few comparisons supplied to us by fellow Nintendo YouTuber King Avery Games. Based on this figure, size-wise, with the two joypads attached, it appears that this portable is considerably slimmer than the Wii U gamepad. Without them, it's approximately a little bit wider than the new Nintendo 3DS XL. In other words, it could easily fit within bags of any size, even a slim leather messenger bag. It is the customization options and compatibility that makes this system so great, since the joypads are not the only controllers available for the Switch on the go. No. The redesigned and heavily improved Pro Controller is also applicable for usage on the console display alone. This is what we believe will be the great selling point to get those third parties on board. You can use a traditional slash hardcore controller while setting up the screen using the built-in stand on the go. And according to one of the actors in the reveal trailer, it is a super comfortable controller both to hold and play with. One of the things we overlooked in our Everything We Know video about the Switch was the important detail that no children or families were visible throughout the entire reveal trailer. Let us put this short. This is unprecedented and completely against all stereotypes attached to Nintendo as a child-friendly company and the many blunders committed when promoting the Wii U. 
Instead, Nintendo most probably desired to send a message that this system is crafted for all age segments, including those busy, young, hip, and most importantly, working adult people with a tight time schedule. A perfect demographic for a handheld slash home console hybrid that does not have the time to play games for several hours on the TV. Thanks to the Nintendo Switch, they can play their favorite titles whenever and wherever they want. But does this general demographic play Nintendo games? Let us look at this from a different perspective before we answer that question. What games do third parties sell on other systems? Usually these are games that are meant for a mature 18 and over audience. In this case, Nintendo is simply stretching out a hand to adults and, at the same time, third party developers. If they are serious about this effort and are able to maintain this crucial balance of marketing towards and among adults and adolescents, then the system might be a hit among the demographic and as a result, attractive to continue supporting for third-party developers. Though, this will naturally depend on how Nintendo will price the system. 250 to 300 US dollars will likely drive sales, but to seal the deal, a solid and enhanced Nintendo online service for the system is mandatory. But does this mean that the Switch will primarily be a third-party system? No. Far from it. Since with the Switch, Nintendo are bringing all their developments to one system, and do not believe the recent statements. The facts remain, the Wii U is dead, and 3DS will be dying after 2017. I mean, there was obviously a reason why Nintendo merged their console and handheld divisions back in September of 2015. They're putting all their future projects on the Switch. Everything from Mario, Zelda, Metroid, Smash, Mario Kart, Splatoon, everything will now appear only on the hybrid system. It appears that Nintendo is taking this notion really seriously since the reveal trailer included system seller titles such as The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the next generation 3D Mario game, and a remastered version or some kind of successor to Mario Kart 8 and Splatoon the two greatest system sellers on the Wii U. Moreover, titles that up to this point have been exclusively handheld, such as Pokemon, Fire Emblem, and of course Animal Crossing, will finally return with their mainline installments on a home system. Sort of. With it, there is no need to be afraid of Nintendo's notorious console drought, since their first and second parties will likely supply the system with multiple new titles every month of the year. No longer will consumers have to wait four or five years between 3D Mario or 3D Zelda games. This alone will drive system sales as heavy hitters will hit the system so often that there will be no need for filler or poorly developed cash grab games. You know, Triforce Heroes, Mario Tennis, Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Since the N64, Nintendo have been struggling with securing, or more specifically holding on to, universal third party support throughout their console's life cycles. Will it be different this time? It's hard to tell, but based on the new line of third-party partners and the tease of some of these in the reveal, it is likely to assume that the Switch will boast more than this the greatest output of first-party games on any Nintendo system to date. Why is this a big deal? The answer is simple. Without third-party support, a system begins slowly but surely to dwindle, since it cannot offer the experience found on other systems. To put it shortly, gamers who look for something more than Nintendo content stay away from the system. This is why the N64 and GameCube struggled, the Wii got in serious trouble after 2008, and the Wii U completely and utterly failed. Nevertheless, the Switch offers, for the first time, an advantage to game developers. Game cards with way greater storage than traditional Blu-rays that fit any system, even a handheld and it is exactly the hybrid concept that attracts third-party developers to give the system support and a true chance to succeed. One other thing, which is also reassuring in this context, is that Bethesda's Vice President Pete Hines gave an ultimatum a few months back, saying that they will not support the next Nintendo system if it is weaker than the Xbox One. Our guess is that the handheld portion alone might be a little weaker than an Xbox One, but the docking station might add some additional performance and punch to the console, boasting graphics above 1080p. If this turns out to be correct, then this system is likely to sell on its concept and appeal itself. In other words, if Nintendo doesn't screw up the hardware and marketing, and the Switch turns out to be a tremendous success, then it is probable that we might see more of next-gen Elder Scrolls, 2K Live, Kingdom Hearts 3, Final Fantasy, and maybe even Red Dead Redemption 2, and more.
All in all, we can say that Nintendo is on its way to succeed with the Nintendo Switch, both in terms of its NVIDIA-powered hardware and hopefully supplemental processing power through the docking station for a stunning graphical experience on our Full HD and 4K HDR TVs. The time to switch back to cartridges is correct, as these have for a long time now offered much more storage than Blu-ray discs. Nevertheless, the most interesting switch comes in the handheld console concept itself that is destined to become a tremendous success if Nintendo continues their solid marketing effort towards older demographics. The combination of the greatest first party lineup on any Nintendo system due to the fusion of the console and handheld businesses and solid third party support can make this system indestructible for any competition. The power of the system is of course important, but it speaks for itself that an equation of Nintendo plus third parties will crush Sony and Microsoft if it is priced correctly, say around 250 to 300 US dollars. That will definitely empty store shelves in no time. With that being said, it is a shady business practice no matter what to show your games in your reveal trailer if they aren't fully confirmed from third party developers for the system. We hope for a lot more honesty in your next presentation and are still somewhat cautious in terms of your next move. That is why we will in a few days give our reasons why we believe the Nintendo Switch could still fail despite having such a great reveal. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the first part of this mini-series then please feel free to like, share and comment. But most importantly, subscribe to not miss the second and final part of why the Switch will either succeed or fail in its quest to capture the gaming community.